My slide. Yep. There we go. Recording. Thank you for the reminder. Um, so today's been a kind of not good day for me, but that's okay. I sat to do my PowerPoints. I did 5100, and then I used the same set of slides and did 51, whatever it was, and um, the wrong one. And I, apparently I copied over the 5100 I did. Instead <laughs> of saving and saving. So we're not going to do slides tonight. So it's just me. Um, I'm, I'm exceedingly interactive because I don't really enjoy teaching a whole lot. Um, I just spent 35 years doing stuff like that. Um, and so it's a, this is more of a question answer kind of thing. Um, so let's talk about 50P 5100. Um, we're going to discuss the um, UAS mission pilot duties and responsibilities. So here's the conditions they set up. You're a mission pilot trainee, and you must discuss the uh, mission pilot duties and responsibilities. So what we're going to do is by the end of tonight, you should be able to discuss the mission pilot duties and responsibilities. Pretty easy. Um, so who can tell me what the very first number one priority of a mission pilot is? Safety. If, you don't, if, you, if, if I don't get volunteers, um, just hop on. If I don't get volunteers, I'll just call from the list. The safety of the crew. Uh, that is not correct. Ooh. I say it's the safety of the people around the area, those who are not involved in the mission. That, that is not correct. Rules and regulations. Who was that? And I, because you're really strong. Captain Dresden from Livonia. Right, so that's correct. To fly the aircraft in a safe and proficient manner while following all of the rules and regulations of the FAA and Civil Air Patrol. Number one priority. That's your first and foremost duty. Of a mission for is a mission pilot is to fly the aircraft safely um, and in a proficient manner. That way you can get the job done. Who can tell us what the second um, most important duty of the mission pilot is? I love it. Command the wrong answer. Safety. I'm sorry. Say that again, Alfonso. Safety. Um. Safety, safety in, in a manner of speaking, yes. I mean, who the CIC is. Right. Um, so, yep, I think that was, was probably the, 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 more, um, the more correct answer. Safety is always the right answer, by the way. Um, it's to remember that you are, the, you are the pilot. You are the remote pilot in command, and you're the one who makes the final decision as to whether you take off and when you land and when you call stop. Um, and that means more, more than likely it means because of safety. You're dealing with it because you need to, you need a safe environment. And if, if the environment's not safe, then you're not going to fly. Because ultimately when something goes wrong, um, according to both uh, Civil Air Patrol and um, the FAA, um, you're the one responsible. If it goes wrong, it's your fault. Um, and... Uh, and so you need, to, you need to realize that you're the one. If the IC says fly and you say it's not safe, then you don't fly. That's the end of that discussion. I mean, you have that discussion with the IC. They may find a different pilot who, find, who feels that it's safe to fly. And it might be just be that where you're <laughs> flying is, is not, you're not comfortable with it, but another pilot may be. The other thing so, you might want to also mention is that like in powered aircraft, any crew member has the ability to stop a mission. So if a technician sees something that's unsafe, uh, they can stop or ground the mission. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so some of, the, some of the rules to remember when you're, um, along with the fact that you're the remote pilot in command, is that you need to be designated as the pilot before the flight begins. With that said, you can change remote pilot in command in the middle of the flight. You can actually hand it over and say to another pilot that's certified um, and say, you, and they say, I'm accepting command and you can say, I'll, I'll, I'm accepting tech. Or you might be ill and you may have three people on your team, two pilots and a technician. Somebody can say, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be the, I'll be the uh, RPIC and, and then you step back. Um, because of because of whatever the reason might be, 
You need to ensure that the mission poses no undue hazard to people, aircraft, or property in the event of a loss of control of the aircraft for any reason. Um, so you have to make sure that you're operating in a safe area and that um, no one's going to get hurt if it falls out of the sky, or at least the probability of that is going to be low. And um, you need to make sure that you're operating your, your aircraft um, in compliance with all of the FAA rules and regulations. Wouldn't security be part of that too, as far as making sure that your, your, your equipment is being safe and um, there's nobody there to tamper with it during the time you're doing the mission? Absolutely. Absolutely, because your, your area of operation needs to be clear of people. And, and that, includes, that includes where you're operating from and, um, and, uh, and the surrounding areas. For example, during the Great Lakes mission um, in the end of February this year, one of the tasks we were given um, was to go down into an area um, of one of the cities that um, has a very high crime rate. And um, in order to complete that task, we were going to have to coordinate with with that city's police and ask for an escort to be there the entire time we operated um, to ensure that everyone was safe because we, we were dealing with thousands of dollars worth of drones, which are easy to steal um, and, and take. Um, and so we, we ended up, because it was just an exercise, we ended up turning that, that, um, uh, that tasking down um, just because a, a risk assessment played out and it just wasn't worth the risk to equipment, but most importantly, not at risk. It wasn't worth the risk to our, our people. Um, and so now if it had been an actual mission, we would have flown it because we would have been, the, the local police department would have been more in line with, with assisting if it had been a, an actual mission. Um, the next point is being able to safely operate your SUAS relies on, on, um, um, on a number of, of things. Um, when it comes to the pilot. And it's the pilot's duty to ensure that, that they, they fit all of these categories or, the, or these items. Can anybody tell me what some of those capabilities are that they have to have? Uh, physical and mental capabilities. And by that, we look at I am safe as uh, the example. Yeah. So can you tell us what I am safe means? <laughs> I can look it up again. You can look it up, I'll let no. you. All anyone right. can help. How about you, 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 you want help? If we anyone help yeah, if wants help with I am safe, I mean, wants to give him some help with I am safe, go ahead. Illness. You don't get to just use the acronym. You have to tell what it is. I, am, I am safe is for, for illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue, and yeah. pilot's uh, mental uh, condition. Food and water. And Very good. So, yep, it's the pilot's mental condition and physical condition. Um, if, if you're tired, if you only had three hours sleep and you're up flying, it can get kind of strenuous. Um, and, and it's just fatiguing mentally um, because you're planning, you're not just flying, you're also planning the mission and carrying that mission out. And, and, and if you don't have a lot of experience, it can be exceedingly stressful. And if you do have a lot of experience, um, it can still be exceedingly stressful based on where you are. For example, I would be stressed if I had flown missions in Puerto Rico because I would be looking at the ground constantly for snakes because I am a big, huge hater of snakes. And um, they, they scare the devil out of me. Um, why I moved back to Michigan from Texas. Um, one other reason. Um, but I would be, I would be like, I'm, I'm horribly conscious of that. So I would be looking down. I don't know if I would be in the right mental state to fly in Puerto Rico. I probably would because there'd be other people around, but that would be one of the jobs of the team is to watch out for snakes, for me anyways. <laughs> um, so it's not just, it's not just the PIC. Um, it's also the person that's manipulating the controls because as a PIC, you don't have to be the one flying. You can give that job over to someone else on the team as long as you're standing there and able to take control immediately. So that's allowed. It doesn't just have to be the PIC manipulating the controls. Your mission technician needs to follow those same, those same I am safe guidelines um, simply because they're the ones that are going to be watching for that drone. 
they're going to they're going to be keeping their eyes on it constantly or looking around. Um, I was on a team that had we had four people on the team. Two were looking. There was a pilot. There were two that were looking um, at the drone and one that was actually looking at traffic and people in the area and, and announcing when cars were approaching and when people were approaching and, and making sure that our area and our search area stayed clear. Uh, so it can be a, a, a number of folks who are on your team. Um, you know, and, and don't be ashamed to say, I, I just can't fly today. I need, I need rest. Um, I have a cold. I, I, took, I took Benadryl and I can't stay awake. Um, whatever the reason is, don't be afraid to say I can't. Um, so in addition to the PIC duties, your general duties and responsibilities include nine items listed in the squirter. Can um, folks tell me what those nine items are? <laughs> now you could you could pull up the squirter and start me, listing them off. A briefing. A briefing. A briefing. Brief your crew. You have to. You have to obtain a complete briefing, and and plan the sortie, and then and and as every good mission pilot knows, and um, and Jeff is already a good mission pilot in the man on the man side, and I'm sure will be an excellent pilot on our side. Um, you always include your technician and the whole team in the briefing. Um, and remember that. Um, you may be the aircraft commander, but you're not always the mission commander. So sometimes you may have, um, you may be the, you may be the commander of the aircraft, but your tech may actually be a much more experienced um, pilot and, and <laughs> is acting as a tech. And that person may actually be the mission commander for that, for that, for that sortie that, um, that you're flying, that you guys are doing. So um, you have to keep that in mind that there's those, all of those things are play, play a role, but yeah, and you have to keep the, the definition of your roles together. And so that you know who's, who's who um, and what's going on. And you and it might just be you're a pilot and your technician is a technician, but your technician has 20 hours of being a, a flight technician an SUAS technician, and you've got four hours of being, um, you know, four hours of, of flying drones. So you're going to rely on your technician and they may actually be the, the mission commander for that. So, and then again, bringing in your crews. Um, so that covers the second one also. Thoroughly brief the crew before the flight. And that includes battery management. You have to make sure you're managing your batteries. I always stress that when you're flying that the technician always asks the pilot how much battery life is left. And depending on what drone you're flying, you're going to get a number or you're going to get a per um, you're going to get a, a, a wattage number or you're going to get um, a, a, um, a percentage. Yeah. And on the Sky Dios, which Michigan Wing has four of, and you're going to get a percentage on that one, on those. And so, what's, the pur what's the purpose for the wattage? Um, well, if, if you know. your, it, it tells you what's left in your battery for some drones. I have one drone that gives me that, and it tells oh, me how, okay. much, how much battery life is left. <clears throat> I know I have to. I have to land by a certain batter, by a certain number. Um, I prefer the percentage, giving, but the wattage is more accurate, actually. Is it giving you kilowatt hours left, or is it giving you actual watt? Or um, watts doesn't make sense. Voltage yeah, that's what sense. I was thinking too. Voltage makes better. Yeah, uh, maybe wing SUAV. It's voltage is what you're looking All right. for. Thanks. I'm sorry. I, I get watts and voltage mix, volts mixed up, so it's a voltage. It gives me. Oh, okay. All right. My apologies. Yeah. I, I just know what the numbers are on each of my drones, and I don't really pay attention to that. To the more technical stuff, I should. Um, so on a on on the Sky Dio, you you get up, you get a percentage left, and you also get three different colors in a in a circle right. around your percentage. Um, and so those they're green, yellow, and red, and um, and everyone thinks that when red is really big, it's a bad thing. It's not necessarily. Um, the green tells you how much battery you have left to get back to your landing site. The yellow tells you that if you're really far yellow, um, and I get these two, I just, I, I don't have my notes in front of me. The yellow and the red stand for distance from landing site 
and height above landing site. So the higher you are, the bigger the red, the farther away you are, the bigger the yellow. And as you get closer and lower, that green bar can actually increase. So in Civil Air Patrol, um, as, as uh, Austin says, bingo is 30. So it's 30%. You want it, your target is to land at 30%. Um, and actual don't go below is 20%. So if you can't make it back at 30, better be on the ground by 20. Um, I'll tell you during my training uh, two, two weeks ago, um, I landed at 7%. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Fortunately, Sky Geo didn't care. <laughs> my instructor didn't care, but I it was like, oh, God, don't tell Austin I'm at 7%. And so, wow. And because those of us who fly your drone, sir, panic when we get down <clears throat> below 20 or well, yeah, down below 30. And when it shows one after a bad a bad flight, then you get nervous. <laughs> so anyways, it does happen. Battery management is, is crucial, especially the longer you're up. And um and sky deals will land automatically if they run out of if they run out of juice. Um, ask Christy and Kevin. Okay. Um did you get down to seven percent because of a headwind, and you had to fight a headwind back? Nope. I'm. We went down to seven percent because I was instructing, and um, my student, who was the Sky Dio student uh, instructor, was being um, uncooperative, and I was spending too much time um, edging him along instead of just telling him what the hell to do. And uh, and he pointed <laughs> that out when, we, when I got on the ground. I said, no. If, they, if, you're, if your student's not doing it, just move your finger and do it for them. Tell them this is what you do. Um, <laughs> different teaching techniques. I, I, don't, I don't teach that way, but, um, and, I, and I did start out with a battery that was only at 80%, so, um, but that's not an excuse. We should have been doing more battery uh, management because battery management is exceedingly important because drones will drop out of the sky without batteries, just like airplanes drop out of the sky without fuel. Um, only we drop straight down and airplanes at least generally can, can uh, glide a, a bit. Um, so make sure you, what are some of the other categories, um, the, uh, some of the other things that the, um, RPIC is in charge of and, and getting duties, um, and responsibilities during a flight. Thoroughly brief the crew. Good. Thoroughly brief the crew. Yep. Absolutely. In all phases of the flight. Yep, in all phases. So you're going to brief the crew on where you're taking off, what the hazards are, what you want them to be looking for. You're going to brief the crew on where you're going to be flying and what they need to be looking for. Um, and they're going to tell you, well, you know what? In this area, I saw, I see all these power lines. Um, or we have a lot of trees in this area that have thin branches on them. And so we need to be careful of that. Um, and you're gonna you're gonna brief the 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 flight pattern you're, you you want to fly, and then you're also gonna brief the um, the landing, because you may not land where you take off, you may land in another location, and you may set a different home point. Um, generally not. Um, that might happen if you're with a ground team though. Um, what's another responsibility you need to do? Obtain a flight release. Yep. Obtain a flight release. Um, and this is. Um, you're going to call a flight release officer, um, one of the seven here in Michigan wing. So I will tell you this, um, and we're going to continue to do this because we have to until the new regulation comes out. And in the new regulation, they're doing away with flight release officers, but they're not until that comes out, we still have to do it. Um, so there are seven flight release officers in the state for SUAS or you can technically call any flight release officer in the state of Michigan. Um, to obtain a flight release for the for your for your um, SUAS system, regular flight release officers won't have a clue what they're supposed to ask you, but that's okay. You can tell them. Um, what's another one of the responsibilities? Maintain a sterile cockpit. Sure. Who can tell me what a sterile cockpit is? Um, uh, especially with no fooling around. No, no unnecessary, unnecessary talking. And Okay, so let, let me, you know what, let's go to uh, Khalid. Is that how I say your first name? Yes, I pronounce Khalid. Khalid? Okay, well, I'm, I'll change the way I pronounce it. 
Um, let's go to Khalid so that, because um, he's the one that said sterile cockpit. So let's, Khalid, what, tell us what a sterile co cockpit looks like to you. Uh, sterile cockpit would be uh, maintain uh, uh, conversations that are related to the mission, uh, eliminate any unnecessary conversation uh, outside of the mission. That's not the time to talk about uh, the uh, event you're planning to to go to after the mission or the next day. Uh, focus on the mission, focus on help assisting uh, uh, your team, as well as if you're a technician, assist your uh, PIC. Okay, anyone and, else have something to add? Uh, especially during takeoff and landing. Uh, yeah. Things can go wrong very fast. Yep, especially during takeoff and landing. And you Take off and landing, you truly want to make sure that your landing area is, is clear. We operated two weeks ago, um, we're operating and landing in front of a, a pavilion. Um, and at one point we were landing, one of the students inside the pavilion knew we were landing, a piece of paper blew out, wasn't going to be in the way, but she came, she started to run out to, to get that paper. And three technicians who were on the mission all yelled, stop. And fortunately she listened. Um, and she stopped dead in her tracks because she may have been in the way of the drone as it was coming down. So you always you always have to be vigilant, even even though we were all there training and we were all being vigilant. Um, for a moment, she just reacted. Um, so we have that. What's another one of the responsibilities we need to follow? Safety, live pattern. Yep. Like patterns. Possible. Yep. So you're going to, you, you, when you're getting your briefing, and I will tell you that it, whether it's done by an AOBD, so the air branch director, um, or whether it's done by the ground branch or, or the planning section chief, um, because it can happen from any one of those three folks in, on a mission, um, or it's the IC that calls you and says, I need this done. Because we're so new and they're and they're inexperienced with what we do, um, they're probably going to leave the pattern that you fly up to you. Um, but they may not. And so if you if they tell you they want you to fly an expanding square, um, starting from the center and going out, then you're going to fly an expanding square. Find this find as close to the center as you can get to the to whatever it is, and then you're going to you're, you'll fly out from there. Um, it might be you're flying a point around an object and taking taking photographs uh, on a 45 oblique, and so you're going to you're, you're going to fly that. You can either now on the sky deal you can plan it out, um, or you can fly it manually and take manual pictures um, for those. So, but make sure you're flying the patterns as completely and precisely as you possibly can. Um, and report anything that you couldn't do. If there was an object in the way, if they want you to take a, a picture around a building and there's a tower that's 10 feet from the building and you can't, and it's tall and you can't get around that, you're gonna have to explain that to them as a deviation. Um, so what's one of the other responsibilities? We're down to about three left. A recording. Oh, Monitor. Uh, 2.14. All right, say that again, James. Uh, recording uh, whatever you do on a uh, FEMA 2.14. Uh, recording everything, absolutely. You may, you have to make sure that all your forms are, are um, accurately and completely done, including um, the CAP form 109U. Um, and I'm gonna call one of those up in just a moment um, so that we can go through that. Uh, the 109U, anything. So when it comes to a mission, for those of you who have been on missions and have had to fill out the paperwork, you understand this. For those of you who are new to it, if you record it, you scan it, and you upload it into, into the sortie because it's part of the mission record. So you're, you're required to do the, the flight release right now, so that goes in the mission record. You're required to do your ORM, that goes in the mission record. You're required to do your the 109U. That goes in the mission record. Um, you can't upload the pictures you take because Wimmers doesn't handle that, uh, but th they're there. Um, 
you're required to use, if you're using your own drone, you're required to use a hold harmless. So that, that's part of it. Make sure all the paperwork is complete and accurate and legible so that when, if someone comes through, and I should say when, when someone comes through and audits, they'll be able to, to be able to, to tell exactly what happened on your sorties. Um, anything else? There's a couple more. In here. Go ahead, John. Well, over. Um, we had a mission recently where this was an airplane mission, but it applies to the same thing. What happens is, is you want to record all of what you're able to see and what you're not able to see. We were looking for a person we could see down into all of the, the, the ponds and the, and the creeks and stuff, verify that they weren't in the water. That's hard to do from the ground. And they actually went out and found this person later because we eliminated a lot of the areas that they needed to look. They, we got a big thank you, even though we didn't find them. So you always want to make sure you record, not just, oh, I flew this pattern, but I flew this pattern. These were the conditions. We could see these things. We couldn't see these things. We couldn't, you know, for instance, we can, in the winter, we can see through deciduous trees, but not pine trees. You put that down so that people know hey, we should be looking in the pine areas because we have a good chance that if they were in the other ones, they could see them. Anyway, that's just a comment about what you, stuff you want to record in there. And you're absolutely right. You didn't see as well as what you did see. Um, I know in one course that um, I've been following, they talked about a search and they said, well, we searched this area and we didn't see anything on the road. Well, they didn't look, no one looked off the road because they said they searched on the road and they went down this road, but they didn't say anything at all about looking off the road and no one looked off the road. And um, ultimately the person was found deceased. Um, is there any, are there, there's one more responsibility that we wanna make sure we get in there. A couple of them actually. Well, make sure that people get rest after the mission or if we have to stop the mission, make sure they get the rest if they're not up to the Absolutely. We need to make sure our air crew, um, the air crew has sufficient rest during um, crew rest periods. So that doesn't mean you go back to your, you're done flying and you head back to mission base. That doesn't mean that you, um, you go in and you, you do other things for the mission. It means you go in and you stop. You report back and you stop and get your hours of rest because otherwise you're not resting. You're still working. Um, and if you're out as an independent release where they've given you a mission called and you're flying and you go, go home and rest. If, especially if they, you know you're going to go out the next day or at a later time. Rest means rest. Um, and the last one is to monitor your technician and ensure that all events, sightings, and reports are recorded and, re and, um, and are recorded and uh, reported. Um, so that kind of goes with that other one, making sure everything's spelled out. Um, so let's go, let's talk a little bit about sterile cockpit. Um, we did, we kind of covered it. I think you guys did a great job with it. I just want to make sure we go over it. It's a concept that recognizes that um, operations other than routine cruise flight are intrinsically more hazardous and require the undivided and vigilant attention of all crew members, meaning non-essential conversations and activities not directly related to the operation and missions are inappropriate. So just like Khalid said, um, we don't want to know what you're doing tomorrow night um, or tonight when we're all done. We want to know just what's happening right here on the mission. Um, and so we, we need to keep that in, in mind. The PIC or the RPIC is responsible to ensure that the non-essential conversations, activities, and otherwise distracting actions do not occur during the portions of flight that are considered critical. So if you're the RPIC, and let's say, um, oh, just for the sake that um, uh, Max Badney is, is the P RPIC and I'm his technician. So I've known Max since he was a cadet, like probably most of the staff. Um, and, I'm, and I'm this big old mean colonel that he's always been afraid of. Um, and I'm standing there chatting with, with Jerry Boir and Max is the RPIC and we're getting ready to take off. Max's responsibility is what, Max? That is to make sure the cockpit is sterile. And so what do you have to tell me? You have to tell them to say, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember off the top of my head because I don't have it in front of me. 
And I well, that's okay. Work. How do you get me from stopping talking to Jerry? Because I'm your technician. Just use whatever comes to mind. There's no right word or wrong word. So the mission, um, so we should start focusing on the mission now. So start with cockpit. Okay, so, so that would be a very polite way. You might just <laughs> oh, shut up. We need your attention right here. Now, right. I'm never flying with Khalid because Khalid's going to tell me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I picked on Max because Max and I, and I really, and I did mean to do it. Um, it's really <laughs> common. And Sorry, while I was team commander, it actually happened in man flight. We had inexperienced crew members not stand and say something to an experienced pilot. And they thought something might have been wrong. The experienced pilot didn't realize they had missed something. And, and it caused an incident that had to, that went through investigation and everything else. Fortunately, nothing was damaged. No one was hurt. Um, but it still caused an incident. But they didn't speak up because of intimidation. And it's very easy to be out in the field with someone who, who you, you, you know by reputation, who has tons of hours, um, has held a higher grade or, or position for years bef before you, um, to not say anything because out of respect for them. Um, I will tell you that uh, you, need, you need to get over that. You're in charge, so be in charge. That's, that's all there is. You're in if I may, sorry, if I, if I may interject, remember what we talked about when we were talking about communications and the barriers to communication. Um, and of course, rule number one is keep it respectful, but always we, we always remember that while we're there, our grade and our, uh, you know, our, our, our grade and our ego was checked at the door. Right? Okay, so my grade will be checked at the door. I'm not so sure I can do my ego, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Jerry. We'll talk well, offline. That's right. Hey. <laughs> I only no, teach Jerry's it, right. sir. I can't force it. I can't enforce it. I can only yeah. teach it. <laughs> grade and ego need to be checked at the door. And if, and if ego isn't checked at the door and you're the RPIC and your technician's ego isn't checked, shut the mission down. Just shut it down so we're not fine. End of discussion. And and put it in a report and upload it and make sure that when you're debriefed, you say, I I my technician, Colonel Bomer, would not pay attention, was not doing his job, and it was an unsafe situation, and I shut it down. End of discussion. I will tell you, it should 100 percent of the time. The folks you have to report that to should be backing you as as the RPIC, and um, and and I should not be allowed to fly on a flight crew after that. So I'll behave, I promise. Um, okay, so let's go back to simple uh, sterile cockpit. And the simplest way to ensure that all crew members and passengers are aware of the requirements is to conduct a crew and passenger briefing. So passenger briefing says passenger because this is taken right out of man flight. So who would the passengers be in um, on an SUAS mission? Or did they just make a mistake? No, uh, it would be- Technicians. Technicians. The technicians are already here. So it says technicians and passenger or crew and passenger. So the, I, I would put the technicians under the crew. Who would you put under passengers? The ground team maybe? The people. Yeah. Um, okay, observers, ground team. Observers. Ground team. Your ground team folks that are not part of the SUAS crew itself. So that's an important thing to remember. Remember, FAA prohibits you from flying over people unless they're part of your crew. Ground team members who are not training to be technicians or are not functioning as technicians but are functioning as ground team members, while that you can use them to observe, you can't routinely fly over them because they're not part of the SUAS crew. So you have to keep that in mind. You can fly by them, just not over them. Um, so you're going to keep the brief simple, keep it clear and concise. These are my expectations. I expect everyone to be 10 feet away from the landing pad, um, things like that. Um, and it's also essential that the PIC include the sterile cockpit brief uh, in, uh, in the statement or uh, in, in your briefing statements. 
talk about the sterile cockpit and tell them what that means. Tell them you don't want people talking to your technicians or to you during takeoff and landing um, or during cr other critical phases. Um, perhaps that might be while you're, you're trying to figure out where, when you're gonna set that up. So I'm going to share my screen right now with the form 109U and we'll go through that. So this is a, a form 109U. Um, so this one has, um, it's, a, it's the fourth and um, yeah, page three and four. Uh, so it's on the other, the other part, part of it's on the other side. So you feel you're supposed to fill one of these out for every mission you fly. Um, and so they're pretty simple. Um, let's go look at flight number seven on here. So remember when you're doing a mission, a sortie with your drone, you might be sent out on a sortie that requires four flights or five flights. So that's not five separate sorties. That's one sortie with five flights. So that's why these, that's why this says flight number. So you're going to put the date, description, or type of flight you're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing a mapping flight. Um, we're going to be looking over the ridge flight. Who's the pilot? Who's the technician? It gives you places for two technicians. Um, are we taking any images? What are the number of images we're taking? Um, your FAA um, drone number is on the is on the drone. That'll be written down on probably on probably flight number one, and then you're going to just it'll just get copied over. Uh, same with um, aircraft model. It's the Sky. It'll be the Sky Do two, or it'll be the Phantom three Pro. Those are the only two aircraft we have in Michigan currently. Um, this is really important. Takeoff time, landing time, minutes, and, and, um, and battery number, and battery remaining. So takeoff time and landing time are important because we need to, we need to track how many hours are on the propellers. Um, I'm not sure what it is for the, for the Phantoms, but for the Sky Dios, we have to change all four propellers at 50 hours. It's a mandatory change. And if we're flying the SkyDio X2D, um, then we have to change them at 100 hours. Uh, and then battery number and battery remaining is important because for battery management, it helps, uh, it helps uh, the, that quote unquote owner of the drone um, maintain how many cycles of charging the batteries have been through. So that's all that's really required on the, on the, on the imagery log on the, on the 109U. And you're going to, um, and then over here would be the, the sortie, um, the SUAS sortie summary. So you're going to put down your sortie number. So let's say it's in sortie 64, which if you're flying the next sortie under the Michigan wing number, it would be sortie number 64. Um, mission number, the mission date, um, again, your name and ID, your ORM score, your flight release officer's name, and then whatever you did down here. Um, so for the Great Lakes region mission, down here we would have put um, Eric Hanby um, was the pilot, I was his technician, and we took ortho mosaic pictures of, of um, two dams, and I can't remember the, name of them, the names of them but we did two dams. And so that's what we would have put in there. Um, and we would have listed that we couldn't do the other two. One, we couldn't get a lance for it because it was off the end of the runway at Wordsmith. And the other one, we just ran out of time. Um, what side was dam was one of them? Pardon? Both side dam. Yep, there you go. Um, Quick, you have a number of images. Um, often we will be doing video. I assume we put we put zero in there if it's video, but is there something for video for number of images? No, we've already well, discussed video, that. What I would do under what did you what and what did you tell them, Jerry? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, we had already discussed one of the things that uh, this is great for was because it gives us a review of the 109 and any image is whether it's a video or whether it's a picture. So if we have three pictures and one video, it's actually four images that we are recording in there. So if you have one video, you can write one. Right. And, 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 and I might add video. I mean, who, if you want to add that detail, 
Um, it's not, it's not a strict, it, it's supposed to be descriptive, not restrictive. So if you want to add more to it, you want to go to the notes page, you can add notes in that, on that note page, on that last page. Yeah. And, and as we just, and, and I think you were, you, you missed that, that night, uh, Jeff, but basically the purpose for that is to, is to in fact show when you're going back, when you're bringing it back, if it says four, then you know that the, the, the you know, the four that the top, the first four that you've got, whether they be a video or whether they be a JPEG are going to be that, that's going to be that, that flight. So that if you've got 20, uh, 20 different things on that on that card from four different flights you're going to be able to you're going to be able to tell which ones go to which flight thank you okay um and uh so the last thing i want to talk about are the sd cards so there there are two ways to do the sd cards uh with the sky deal again i've never flown a phantom oh no jerry you might be able to help us with the phantom um but the sky deal when it lands Rather than walking up to it right away after the propeller stop, your controller actually says calibrating. And so what it's doing is it's actually syncing the audio and the and the pictures, and you can and it syncs them together. And then you can you can download the pictures right from the Sky Dio itself. Um, and so yes, the Sky Dio, remember this. If you're doing video, it records everything that's being said from your phone <laughs> or the microphone on your tablet. So don't say anything bad about the DOU in Michigan Wing. Um, <laughs> say whatever you want about the Wing Commander. I don't care, but not the DOU. Um, so anyways. But you can say all that you want if you're flying the Phantom because there is no sound on the Phantom. <laughs> there you go. So, um, so oftentimes in the field, you'll have extra SD cards um, or, or not. Um, if you do... You can actually take the SD card out, put it in a small plastic bag, label it as to what it was, what the mission number is, what the sorting numbers are, and and um, and then turn it into to mission base. If you're on your own, um, bring it back to where your to where your your location is. Um, I I always take the SD card out. Um, Skydio doesn't recommend doing that, but I always take it out, uh, download it onto my computer and then upload the pictures to wherever I need to send them. And don't let the, yeah, very good, Jerry. Huh. Sorry. That's all right. You know, that's why I, that's why I love all you guys. Um, oh, one thing on the audio, if you do happen to disturb it, it's still stored as a separate file if it didn't get a chance to merge. Yes, it does. Yep, absolutely. Um, I've, got a question. I, I've got a quick question about the Skydio. Since it records, yes. does that does that mean that all of the video has the sound of the uh, propellers on it? No, it, it records from your from your phone. From the or your oh, I see from the bay. Okay, so yeah. it's recording ground station. It's not recording okay. from. It's not recording what the bird is seeing. It's recording what is in around you right now. And the reason it does that, they set it up that way. So that if you're out just taking videos, you can kind of give a description of what you're seeing and oh, the yeah. video if you want to. Um, there, there is a way you can go into the settings and turn that off. Um, but it's, it's, I think you have to do that every single time. Um, so I, the op other option is just don't let it, just don't let it sync. Um, so that deals with the SD card. So here we go. We're going to do the, the evaluation procedure here. So you're going to divide. Um, I'm going to provide you. On, uh, that's the sub. Uh, those are the um, 70 dash ones. I'm not going to do that. Um, so we're going to oh. do what's called water. So this might be new for you guys. We're going to do what's called a waterfall on on Zoom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a question to you. I would like all of you to type in your answer in chat. Do not hit return. Just type your answer in in chat, and when I say return, then hit return, and they'll all fall down here at one time. But if you hit return before then, I'm going to flunk you. Here we go. State the Sir, I have the problem is I can't access chat on my phone. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll forgive also, you. So, sir, um, our internet is unstable to the point okay. where... If you guys can't, if you can't do it, 
it's not a big it's not a big deal. I'm, I'm, we'll let it go. But we have to. I have to run through this. So this is the best way to do it. First question: State the first and foremost duty of the mission pilot. Typing, typing, typing. Raise your hand when you're done typing so I can kind of get a, a view of who's done. Short and sweet. Two. Okay. Are we doing almost there? Almost there. Okay, go ahead and hit return. So fly the aircraft. Follow safety guidelines. Chris, no. That's okay. Safety. All right, question number two. Here we go. State the second most important duty of the mission pilot. Again, type and don't, but don't hit, don't hit that number. Don't hit that return. That's what I tell you to. Give you a couple minutes here. But I do want you to remember what that answer is. All right, we're gonna do it. Go ahead and hit return. RPIC, remember you are the pilot. That's right. Yes, he is in charge. Excellent. Um, so this next one. We're gonna get a bunch of different answers in here. So just write one of them down. Give one general duty and responsibility of the RPIC, of a mission pilot. Just give one. We went over nine. So you have your choice. Just keep it to a short. Okay, get return. Whoops. <laughs> we follow the crew, communicate with the crew, ensure flight release. Excellent. Okay, good job, guys. Um, you have one of the rules for a uh, sterile cockpit, please. And write it down, but don't hit return yet. Wait. Chris, you have your hand up. Do you have a question? Uh, no, sir, I just didn't put my hand down. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and hit the return. Keep conversation, safety around the address. Eliminate non-essential. Communicate only when necessary. No unnecessary convo. Um, you know, Max is the only one out of all of us that could sit on the floor and actually get up that fast. Who <laughs> knows I couldn't do that. All right, last one. Just can't to watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, last one. Put something down that you put a piece of information down that you would have recorded on the CAP form 109U. And don't hit return yet. Okay, and let's hit return now. Images, battery, number of images, deviation, any deviations or events. Excellent. I like that one. Takeoff time, takeoff time, battery number, also starting percentage. Um, yep, battery number, starting percentage, ending percentage also, if you want to do that, that would be great. Date and time. Um, excellent, thank you guys. Mission number, all right. So you all passed this number. So go ahead and congratulate yourselves. I, I On my slide, I had this big word that said congratulations and it like flashes, but <laughs> I obviously eliminated that, so you're not getting it. So okay. you just get this. Yay. Give yourselves applause. Come on. This is applause on, on Zoom. 